Now, sound is very important for communicating as well as being aware of our surroundings and even conveying emotions. But how does it work? That's what we're gonna to answer today. Uh, so Walter, whales are the loudest living animal on earth. Talk to us about that. <laughs> so whales, specifically sperm whales, make clicking noises for communication that clock in at 230 decibels. So let's put that into perspective and explain what a decibel actually is. So a decibel is going to be a scale measurement of sound. And the decibel scale is going to be uh, zero being a total noiseless environment uh, to a whisper that's at 15 decibels. Moving on up, a conversation is going to be at about 60 decibels. A noisy restaurant will be right at 80. And from this point on, everything that you've been exposed to after 80 decibels for a long period of time could impact your hearing for the long term. So after that point, what we have is 120 decibels is going to be about the volume of a police siren. 130 is going to be a jet taking off. And right at 140 is going to be a firework explosion. And at this point, it's so incredibly loud that your eardrums might be experiencing pain as you hear this massive explosion. And that could damage your eardrum permanently. The award for the loudest sound recorded in human history goes to the eruption of Krakatoa on August 26, 1883. The force of the eruption created a massive blast of sound reaching 310 decibels. So what would 310 decibels do to your eardrums? Let's put it this way. Scientists pay that the threshold of death from sound is in between 185 and 200 decibels. So you wouldn't have to worry about gases or lava from the eruption killing you because it would be the sound. So how does sound work? This episode's brought to you by air. When you're out of breath, grab some air. Without air, we wouldn't be able to make a single noise. Sound travels through all forms of matter, solid, liquid, and gases. And the air is mostly made up of nitrogen at 78% and oxygen at 21%. But thank goodness for our atmosphere keeping in these gases and preventing them from floating into space. So what happens when we speak is our vocal cords vibrate, which in turn vibrates the atoms in the air. And this is gonna cause a chain reaction as atoms vibrate against other atoms. It's going to eventually create a wave of sound that's going to move away from you. So as this sound wave travels to your outer ear, these vibrating atoms are going to enter your external audio canal and hit your eardrum. And this is eventually going to send the sound wave to the inner ear and into the fluid snail cell shaped organ called the Coachella, not the music festival. And at this point, the sound waves are going to be converted into electrical impulses that your brain converts to understanding sound. In the case of whales, whales' clicks can travel four times faster through water than through air. And this is because atoms in water are much more closely packed than they are in the air. And this allows the vibrations to be quickly transferred from one atom to the other. Sound travels faster in liquids. But even more crazy is that a whale sound can travel up to 10,000 miles in the ocean. If you ever want to visit the quietest place in the entire universe, take a trip out to space because space is vacuum. And what that means is it doesn't have a bunch of free atoms moving along that you can vibrate with your vocal cords. So if you scream in space, no one will hear you. So there you have it, the science of sound. Sounds great tool for communicating, but if it's too loud, it could kill you. Hey, listen!